it's fine. It's fine. And actually, let me, uh, I'm just gonna, he's, he's gonna be Kata, uh, <laughs> this kid so I can fix the score because we're doing things on the fly a little bit right now. So I guess we're going to have to take away that prediction. <laughs> well, <laughs> With all of this, all everything that we tried to do here just failed miserably. All right. So we're going to go who will win game two <laughs> between Bratch Kata and uh, Papa Chima here. And this is game one, but, um, Boulevard, if you want to take it away while I try to scramble here and get everything else all set up. Sure thing. So historically, <laughs> the, the pirate deck should be a little bit favored. There's a lot of direct damage that Papa Chima is not going to be able to deal with. And there's really not a lot of blockers on Papa Chima's side. So while we are going to lose a little bit of the board here, actually a pretty significant amount. Things not looking great for Bratch Cataract right here. Really curious to know how the Noxian Fervors are going to play out here. Are we just going to send one at the face? Are we going to Fervor to protect one of our units um protecting the zap is okay but only if it can get in two additional attacks otherwise it would have been better to just fervor that but you know we shall see we shall see unfortunately only mana for one of them and i don't hate the fervor on the face yeah because this does let us get down a bigger jagged butcher and that's going to let us push through at least three damage on the open attack we're going in with two three attack units and I don't have Papachima's hand in front of me because I don't have the right tab open. Let me check it out. There we go. Got that all situated. And all oh, Brittle Steel top deck's pretty brutal for Bratch Kata here. I don't know. I don't know, Doza. 12 HP. We've only got four more burn in hand. I think that the Frost Fights are at least going to give Papachima enough time to establish enough blockers that we're not really pushing through any more damage later on. And I just want to point out... Because uh, I don't think we actually talked about this. Arachnoid Sentry in Pirates is by no means normal, right? We're talking an insane amount of one drops, a couple of two drops. Really, everything is focusing in on the burn, but now it's going to work out great for Papa Ch or for Bratz Kata in this matchup. But what are we going to push here? Three, five? No, actually, we're going to push a decent amount of damage. The Brittle Steel is going to have to come out not for a trade, but just to preserve the life total. That's six coming through. We are three damage away from lethal although oh, with this three sisters papa chima depending on how the mana works out will actually be able to stop the noxian fervor with a frozen tomb all right i'm back everything's good it's looking up stream titles updated everything's back on track we're in the top eight again this is game one thanks for taking over there for a second boulevard appreciate it anytime <laughs> and uh, you're always you're so good at solo casting so it's like you don't even need how, me, Boulevard. That's how I got started. I was like, I think I'm going to wait for a co-caster? Absolutely not. I'm talking into the camera alone for eight hours. Hey, man, you got to get everybody knows, you know, you do YouTube, you do Twitch, you do all that stuff. You got to be good at talking to yourself, man. <laughs> so, but all right, cool. We are into uh, Frostbite. So Papachino playing the only Frostbite represented here in the tournament. Oh, wow. And that We're is actually a... just ripping wow. off the fervor. Yeah. All right. So that is going to play outside of something like the Three Sisters. So maybe that's what Kata kind of a little bit worried about there. And, uh, you know, we're actually, we started a prediction as well. So if ever, anybody wants to bet points in chat, looking like a lot of people thinking Kata's going to win game two. So we'll see if that's going to be the case. Because right now, Papa Chima looking to do 10 more damage, possibly looking at lethal within the next There's turn. Kindly so. Tavern Keeper here. Yeah. Papa Chima plays Kindly Tavern Keeper. He's cracked the code. <laughs> the deck that historically has no healing. Has we heal. thought that this card, <laughs> and this would have been lethal this turn if Papa Chima, well, I guess we do technically have the Three Sisters to stop the demo. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't have been lethal anyway. And I would imagine the Three Sisters comes out here. Preventing two damage with that does seem really impactful. Yeah. And it's not like you have much else to do with the turn. You do have the mana to get down the hearth card as well. So at most you're taking one damage here yeah actually i'm gonna shout out to papa chima there too because as i was going over a little bit earlier you know if we look at archetypes as opposed to just the deck types in you know the distribution of the top eight aggro was by far and away the most heavily represented archetype i think there was something like maybe eight decks or so does that sound right um uh of aggro decks like so a couple people bringing triple aggro uh other people just bringing a couple aggro decks and a lot it might actually even be more than eight maybe more closer to ten especially with dina yeah. now being in the top cut so um, yeah, yeah. Dyna hard spikes it is because random was running zero aggro decks. Now yeah. we've got, um, you know, now we've got 
Dyna in there with the triple aggro. So yeah, aggro definitely king of the day here in OLS number 23 as we get into the top eight, into the final hours of the tournament. So yeah, so shout out to Papa Chima taking game one there because, I mean, listen, he must have been expecting a ton of aggro today because we have never seen mid-range frostbite run heal and it literally just won in the game right there. I just, I do want to mention there's only one tavern. <laughs> <laughs> just listen, that's, but that's all you need. That's all you need. You're just going to draw You just got to find the one up at the right time. <laughs> and you're good. Oh man. <laughs> that's great. That is great. All right. We'll see what you guys uh, get as far as channel points are concerned. A lot of people going uh, Kata for game two here. Well, we'll see what happens if he is able to tie it up 1-1 one, one and bring it to a game three. Or if, Brat, or if uh, sorry, Papa Chima is able to take it 2-0 here quickly versus Bratch Kata. We finally get to see the Noxus Shirima. This is the deck that we've been wanting to see that has been banned every time we actually went to spectate Bratch Kata. There were a couple players running this throughout Swiss. Cat is the only one to make the top eight with it because, yeah, there's no way Dyna's not running a Shadow Isle deck, so we've got that one locked down. And I believe this is a mix of Azir, Draven, Darius? Yeah, not just the Azir, Darius version. All right. I gotta pull this one up because we have not seen this yet. No, we have not. Absolutely not. You know, Grand Plaza is looks... not something we've seen a lot of today. It looks very similar to Pirates for what it's worth. There's still 12 one drops. There's a little bit more spells. We do have the Ruinous Path as well as the mm -hmm. Fervor Decimate. But, you know, we got Ruin Runner instead of Gangplank or Jack the Winner. We got Darius instead of Gangplank specifically. Mm -hmm. uh, we do actually have an, a nicer curve. Nowhere near as many three drops though, right? We've got the Dravens in here, but actually electing not to run the Arachnoid Sentry that we put in the Pirate Aggro in this Noxus Aggro deck as well. Yeah, and I was actually talking about this deck earlier today, and I was just a little bit surprised that we didn't uh we didn't see this a whole lot and i'm actually surprised we didn't see it more heavily represented in the top cut in general either like we've seen a ton of aggro this one wasn't really heavily represented and i mean I, it's a good deck i mean i've played it on ladder it feels really good it's fun to play it, it does the job and ruinous path i think it is an amazing job alongside all these other uh, aggressive cards like decimate and things of that nature and Rune Runner, for that matter, which you just saw a top deck from Kata there. So good to see Kata running uh, yet another aggro deck here in OLS number 23. And uh, Targon, though, you know, we've talked about this a lot in day one as well. Lots of heal in Targon. But sometimes, you know, these aggro decks still able to just do enough damage to get through a star shape and get through guiding touch, things of that nature. So we'll see if that's going to be the case here for Kata. Now Papa Chima's got a weird decision to make. You know, do you throw down a defensive Solari Shield Bearer? Do you go for the Grand Plaza? I like the Shield Bearer more because you don't have a good turn four Plaza, right? Like you could throw down the Shield Bearer and just attack whatever you would have blocked. So that's, mm -hmm. you might as well just block it. Otherwise you're taking the damage for free. But we're out of units, right? Mm -hmm. Like this is not looking great. The Hush doesn't do a whole lot in this matchup. Can't even stop the overwhelm of something like the Ruin Runner. Things not looking great for Papachima here in the early game, but a very timely Leona pickup could swing things. Yeah, Leona definitely a great anti-aggro tool there, just stuffing out an attack. Which, I mean, I guess in this deck specifically, when you have something like Azir, it doesn't do as much as it usually would against aggro. Um, but, you know, because you're still going to get something like the uh, the Sand Soldier is basically what I'm getting at there. But still going mm -hmm. to prevent a fair amount of damage, so imagine we get her here not really too much else we can do yeah kind of awkward because it does just pop the spell shield on the ruin runner which like you could hush it now to stop the overwhelm but and you can't even hush it beforehand because then you don't have daybreak on leona it's an awkward sequence all right there is the block I'm gonna line up onto the uh fearsome there this card, Bakai Reaper, we're seeing a lot of today uh, in some different uh, some different decks here. So good to see this card take off a little bit. I I, that, I like this card for Sharima in general for the archetype. Still a little sad we're not seeing Nasus, but you know it is what it is. And yeah, yeah. there's the Sand Soldier. Stupid dog. <laughs> Made me look bad. <laughs> Getting through two damage there. And look at that. I mean, look at two decimate and ruin his path in hand. That's ten yeah, we got... damage. <laughs> Jesus. But as as you love to mention, Jay does it. You're against Targon. The direct yeah. damage strategy is so unlikely to work out, especially when Papachima has doubled down and is running guiding touches on top of, you know, these other. Oh, excuse me, like the star shaping. But also, we're back on Sunforger, and we get it off the top. That is going to kill wow. the Azir 
and gain us so much life. Yeah, that is not good. You know, th this is one of the better things to use Grand Plaza with, right? Like, even yeah. before this card got nerfed, the whole Solari Sunforger with Grand Plaza was one of the biggest the biggest problems. You know, like, you have Lifesteal, you have Challenger, you can almost certainly pick off a unit with something with six attack at that point with Solari Sunforger. So, yeah, this is definitely going to be a big deal for Papa Chima, and I think that this does close out the game for the most part, but... Yeah, I mean, Cat is going to be able to go a little wide here, but we're really only pushing through six damage, and then Papachima is going to be able to start getting these dragons online and really end the game very quickly. So there is still a chance. There's no more healing in Papachima's hand. At, if that six does go through next turn, then it means that Papachima is down to 12, and we're one decimate away from lethal. All right, here we go. What do we have off the top? It's not the greatest top deck, but we are, like you said, going to go a little bit wide here. We're going to push through some damage. I mean, we basically just have to pray now that Papachima draws absolutely no more peel, and that's a tall ask. We also might just lose the game by then. You never know, because it looks like Aurelian Soul is going to come down on eight. So, well, I mean, Cat is getting out both Decimates this turn. If yeah. Cat a top decks a Decimate, and... Papachima doesn't top deck heal to respond. Yep. That's game over. That's, man, typical aggro but, deck, man. Always play to the top decks. Well, I mean, so we've got, what, 28 cards in oh deck my with... Oh, my God. God. And a star God. shaping to counter it. Oh, that's so fun. <laughs> oh. Ooh, I mean, oh, Red's kind of... The... <laughs> He really oh. wants to win this game finding triple decimate in the top 12, but Papachima oh, finds the answer, and rip. it's insane. I mean, imagine if Papachima were running any other deck in the game. He's already gained 8 HP this game. He's going to gain another 5 more. That's more healing than you'd expect out of even a normal Targon deck. Oh, my God. That's so... That is the top deck to beat the top deck. And I don't think... Think because that's all three decimates. All the decimates are gone. Yeah. Um, I don't think there's a way for Cat to top deck over the next two turns. Maybe like a ruinous path into a Noxian fervor. It really is just coming down to the burn spells. Uh, like we're gonna go down to three here. Decimate comes out for lethal. We go to I think four. <laughs> yeah, star shaping. So there's a chance. There's, there's still a chance. But I mean, you. Kata, you've used all your luck, man. It's it's tapped out. All right, you got three. You got your decimate off the top. Papachima responded in kind. There's no more luck in the bank. You have to be running dry at this point. It's a ruinous path. We could chain two ruinous paths in a row. I'm just saying. Cap. Oh my no God. What? Are you kidding me? There is a hush. There is a hush. But now we have a decimate next turn. You have got to be kidding me. <laughs> And oh Papa my Chima, god <laughs> papa chima doesn't have the time even if he finds the solari sun forger off of this ravoon when he goes to play it next turn the decimates are going to oh, end the game shame. and i believe oh. this is a one of captain farron yeah oh, of course it is why wouldn't it, okay, be it might as well be a one of farron right <laughs> Yeah, Shang, oh, Captain, my Captain is right. Coming in just in time. Not getting Lee Sin Syndrome here. Coming to the party as scheduled, baby. And, wow, this is back and forth here with the top decks. This is insane. And I don't think, I, I guess now Papa Chima has to think, because we know there's, we, everything's known for Papa Chima. So I yeah. think we might actually have to just set up lethal with an open attack, but I don't think we can with Kata at 20 health. Your best bet and this is this is so bad right like this is your best bet okay you play ravoon if it gets sunforger you <laughs> and you and you top deck single combat yep yeah yep and that's uh that's a pretty iffy line there but it looks like yeah. we are just gonna go for the guaranteed level on the <laughs> no, I can't. yeah i mean Man. we don't have i mean we can still top deck healing for papachima right even even Star just shaping. a guiding touch might give us enough time yeah Star shaping as well and instead, we get. We gotta get the Aurelian card first. Nothing. And then. It's a. It's a Leona. Leona. That's not it. Oh, man. It's... We can. Wow. Yeah, that's nothing. Cat is gonna be able to just take it here. We have. What is that? Not eight cards in hand and can't do a single thing. I cannot believe how this is played out in Bratz Cat's oh. favor. 
the 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 back and forth with this game. This is what a way to start this new format for the first top eight of the, the first double S of the format. This is insane. Papachima has lethal. If he was at five, I'm pretty sure he won the game. No, yeah. not quite. We'd still be able to get down the house spider, but as a blocker. Oh yeah. man, the mm -hmm. the triple de what was it? Triple decimate, double fervor, one ruinous path. No, the double fervor was the was the frostbite mid range game, but still five decimates. How much healing do you want us to have, Riot Games? <laughs> so, um, I think Guarja in chat is actually right, though. I think the play here was to actually try to get a messenger into some draw. Yeah, and um, he just didn't find heal. it off the Living Legends. Yeah, and that's unfortunate. And there it is. There's the there's the decimate, and Bratchkata gonna take game. <laughs> gonna take game two here is gonna bring it to a game three and uh whoever bet on bratch Kata, well there you go we uh you getting the points there papa chima is playing one of the most anti-aggro decks that you could possibly craft and it, it's not enough against the insane amount of burn damage that there was available for bratch Kata. And even, even like it had to be Captain Farron. If it was Darius, we lost to Hush. We needed the additional burn spells specifically. All right. Here we go. Game number three. Tied 1-1 one, one here for the top eight. And we have, again, we're going to get this Leona Aurelian Soul deck going up against yet another aggro deck. Like, this is definitely an uphill battle for Bratch Kata, for sure, going up against all Targon with uh, with these burn decks, with these aggro decks. It's it's not easy. <laughs> Somehow, I guess, guess if you just, if you top deck right, then you just always win, right? It's that easy playing yeah. card games. <laughs> and we've even got the Arachnoid Sentry. I'm curious to see if... Uh... I was going to say Playmaker. If Bratch Kata wants to use this aggressively, or if this is going to be used as a counter to things like Solari Sunforger. All right. Bratch Kata or Papa Chief. This, is, uh, this is actually a really pitiful amount of damage push through here. Yeah, for Kata, definitely. The, the Spacey Sketcher into the Charger works out phenomenally for Papa Chima. Yeah, Spacey Sketcher, being able to block a Legion Saboteur is some prime value for this deck. And what am I with the raid, man? Appreciate it. What is up? Welcome, everybody, joining just in time for the top eight of OLS. You guys just missed an absolute banger of a game, too, between Kata and Papachima. Just top deck to beat the top deck to beat the top deck. And now we're on game three, tied up here one to one in the quarterfinals. So lots of gameplay left in OLS 23. Not looking too good for Kata here, like Boulevard just mentioned either. Just not a whole lot of damage getting pushed through there on that first attack. And we looking like we're running out of steam real quick, too. I mean, that's kind of what you expect out of Pirate Egger, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you don't really expect a lot of decks to be able to meet you on the ground in the early game, like we saw with the Spacey Sketcher into the Charger, turn one into two. And now, you know, Papachima's got a lot of stabilization. This is where the Leona starts to get to come down. That's going to take the Misfortune out of combat, at least, and make it so that we're taking two damage if Playmaker wants to go... Bratch Kata uh, wants to go. <laughs> for those of you that can't see it, Bratch Kata is playing on his NA account, which is called Playmaker. And for his own sanity, uh, you know, Jay Doza has been able to cover it up, but I'm reading off my own screen, so forgive me for that one. And nope. I'm actually just going to go in with one attack. That makes a lot more sense. There's no need to, to sacrifice this crack shot Corsair when you don't need to. And, you know, maybe if we can sit on two damage per attack long enough. It'll uh, start to add up in a meaningful way. I mean, we're staring at 12 heal in hand, Boulevard. So <laughs> just, that's a lot of... How many Decimate top decks are we going to need this game to go through all these star shapings? <laughs> like, this is not, not good. I mean, oh man, it just feels so bad when, you know, a Targon deck like this just finds its healing like that so early. Now, what I will say is, you know, you mentioned, all right, can Kata sit on this Misfortune? and this Crackshot Corsair, for that matter, and still just be able to push through that two damage a turn. That might be the case, because the one downside of, of having all this healing is we're not really going to have a whole lot of development happening on board. It's actually really good that we did get the Leona, though. Um, we have to just invest it in these spells. This Concerted Strike taking care of Gangplank, definitely going to feel good. But beyond that, 
we got these two units and that's all we got so maybe kata can start to push a lot more damage over the next two or three turns but i mean eventually star shaping just finds something really big and bad that just ends the game like it always does right and i think that's really going to be the concern here for brush kata make it rain where did that card oh, come gonna from? clear the board what did what, what does make it rain Whoa. do <laughs> we're gonna hush the we're gonna hush the keg right yeah. This is an MF's make it rain. It's going to clear the board. Yeah. And that's that's scary. And it's scary for Kata that the uh, the hush and the keg could come or, through. Or we could also let it go and then play another Leona, but I don't think that's better. Okay. Wow. All right. Papachima's going to let it go. Interesting. I mean, otherwise, you don't really have a whole lot of cards to play in your hand. Um. So maybe this is the better line. I think we had enough mana actually uh, for Hush and Star Shaping, right? So Papachima is Papachima dead? Uh, three, four, five, six, seven, We're eight, close. nine. This is going to be the stun onto it as well. It's nine. We're two off right now. That's really scary. <laughs> well, technically four off because we have the guiding touch. In yeah. Too, so I think we're fine. And I mean, we're going to be able to start getting down these star shapings relatively soon. But OK, so we are going to hush. We're going to throw out a block. I like that. Yeah. A little bit better than using the guiding touch. But I mean, while we're using these heal spells, we're not committing anything additional to the board. Mm -hmm. There's still a lot of things going in. And honestly, Jay, this misfortune might level. I think you're right. I, I mean, there's really no way for... Well, we had the Concerted Strike, but that was used on the Gangplank. We'd have to top deck another another one or a single combat, something like that. These are not the... I mean, these are not the greatest. I guess Destroyer is just maybe going to end the game, but... The Star Shaping doesn't always feel like a great anti-aggro tool because yeah. while you do get the five heal, the chances of you actually getting down any of the cards that you get off of it are pretty wow. minimal. There's no way, no way Kata somehow deals this much damage. Okay. That, that, Are you right. sure about that? This, hold on. Even the, even the concerted, all right, concerted strike actually does kill MF. Wait, on the open attack, does she level? No. Okay. No, she's at three. Okay, okay. So we can We're still close, concerted though. strike. Yeah. And there's a decimate. Oh, it's happening again. It's happening again, Boulevard. Oh, man. So this. We, we're going to negative one for Papachima. We have to throw out the concerted or the star shaping. Yep. And then we don't have mana for both. I think we're dead to decimate. Hold on, concerted. Yeah, we don't have mana for both. We do have mana for. Yeah, I think you have to maximize how much life save here. So I do like the star shaping. And that um, puts us at. I think that puts us at four. And you can also pale cascade. Does that put us at four? Yeah, that puts us at four. Oh my god! No oh, way. Man. There is no way Kata should have picked this up with that much heal in the hand of Papachima. Oh my god. Oh man, and we can't, now that now that we don't have a unit, we can't pale to try and find the guiding touch and Bratch Kata with just an insane oh, string of wow. Destiny top decks from one game <laughs> into the next is this, gonna take it over Papachima and move emote. on to the top four. Bratch Kata just schooling us with how to draw the right cards at the right time. What a lesson. What an absolute lesson there.